myself. All right, all right. Two, two, two. Camera got good. Oh my, my brother, how's it going today? Good, good. Good, good, good. Nigeria Chambers, Lucas Moore here. Come to talk to you about your new project and among some other things. First of all, dope panel today here at San Diego Comic Con. Um, how was that experience for you? A lot of love for you inside the building. Um, um, and, and also you giving your flowers back to the, to the, to the fans, uh, which I really felt that and really appreciate that. But overall, how are you feeling about the whole experience? It was, it was incredible, to be honest with you, because, um, you know, you just never know how things um, can pan out and I didn't have any uh, expectation, but you know the room was pretty full and uh, people seemed pretty receptive, and and so that was just a great feeling, you know. And and I just, um, it for me, it's like just being myself, you know. Talking with the people is, is what I love to do. It being here at Comic Con, um, I've been telling people, I'm just like, man, it's just great to be back around human beings, like yeah. people. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And everybody's out and, and, and doing their thing. So to have a chance to um, to share this story uh, with with you know with the people and um, get them ready for it is amazing. Awesome, brother man. No, I had the pleasure of reading the first chapter of this story. As I looked it up on Amazon, saw it, I said, "Oh, this seems interesting. Let me check out this first chapter." The story hooks you from the beginning, from the time period of setting it in a futuristic society for what happens to the young ladies that we experience in the book. Just what were the thoughts going behind the story and making it so female centric with these three powerful young women? Uh, well, it's, it's, it's one, Zuberi's the woman, and then you have Uzoshi and you have Lencho, but um, it's kind of like what we were talking about on the panel, you know, represent, representation is important uh, to me and women are important to me and especially black and brown women are important to me though obviously it's a story for everyone so that was something that my co-writer and I Clarence um, we talked about a lot you know how to uh, what would be the word execute that in a way that made sense in a story like this that didn't come off like we're pandering you know that that just came off authentic you know and um, and I think we I think we did it. <laughs> um, another person that you brought up and gave a lot of flowers to was your co-writer. Um, I wanted you to just uh, give you a little bit more time to talk about that think tank and you two bringing this project together. Yeah, Clarence A. Haynes, man, that's my guy. Um, brilliant, brilliantly talented writer, and I really um, want to, in w whatever ways that I can. Um, shine a light on him yeah. and he's had an accomplished career and so forth and so on but you know this is about pushing him up you know and uh, and we we really was in the mud with it <laughs> like you know you know i had the mythology i had you know my synopsis and stuff like that and then you know we really do i knew i was going to need a co-writer because i respect the craft of writing it's its own craft. I'm not gonna sit here like, oh, because I wanna write a book, let me write a book. It was like, I need someone who can help guide me through this process and teach me along the way. And he did exactly that, you know? And so we've, we've had, I mean, a gazillion conversations um, about the story, about the world, about the characters, what's the voice of the book, what, you know, all of these nuances and subtleties and, um, it you know it all worked out you know and I'm and I'm proud of him as well and I'm glad that he uh, put in the effort to deal with my craziness because <laughs> creatively you know I'm the type of person that would call you at three in the morning like yo I just <laughs> this came to me and, yeah. and you like dog I'm asleep <laughs> you know but you know he he he, he dealt with all of it and. Um, and I think we pushed each other, you know, because I have I had a very definitive vision of the, the story I want to tell and yeah. and why. Yeah. And so we just tried to stick to that code right there. And um, I'm just excited for people to experience it because I think that kids and adults, it's not. Yes, it's a young adult, you know, 
book, like that's the genre of the box they'll put it in. But adults will read this book and go crazy because we're all kids at heart. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Speak that truth. Now, especially at this point in your career, you being not only black Hollywood royalty, but Hollywood royalty from your illustrious career, film, television, music for a minute there. What made you decide this is the perfect time to do this book? And once it comes out and the public loves it, how many more, how many more books in this series will we get? Well, I'm already working on, the, I'm gonna go backwards on your question. So I'm already working on the second book. Um, I, I've originally visualized three books and then we'll get to film and television and so forth and so on. But in terms of what made me want to write it now, you know, I, I feel like, I feel like I was forced to because timing is everything, you know? And when the time is right for things, like it, that, that's one of the hardest parts of being, I think, successful at anything is just having an instinct of when that timing is about to be right, that's when you want to, you know, strike the iron. You know what I mean? And so I feel like that's what happened with this. And that's why, even though the process took some time, it was, uh, what's that word, Melly fluids. It was just smoothly flowing. It just was happening, you know? And um, I think we spoke about the, I think Krista mes mentioned this on the panel, but we were in, we were in the pandemic when, uh, when we first like really started digging. Like I had already written mythology, all that type of stuff or whatever. But when we really started digging, the lockdown happened. So can't nobody go nowhere. So what we doing every day? We getting up writing. What we doing every night? We getting up writing. Like we were able to, and that's what I mean about timing. Like you can't, you can't make that up. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it actually gave us the space to really just, okay, but just do our thing. And here we are. Coming up on our time, but I definitely want to give you a second to re-quote something you said at the panel today that was extremely powerful, amongst all things said today that was powerful. Your definition and, and how you describe greatness. How I describe greatness is a dollar amount doesn't equate to greatness. You know, greatness is incumbent upon what you do. You know, and it doesn't matter what you, that's not a, when I say what you do, I don't mean status. It means how you treat people, you know? It means if, if you wanna, if you never did 10 push-ups and you do one today, then you do two tomorrow. Then you do three the next day. You know, you, we just keep going after it and the next thing you know, you're doing 100 push-ups, you know? To me, that's greatness, you know? And, and this is in every walk of life because, you know, life is hard. Life is hard and it's tough and, and you know, we, we all come from these environments where, you know, the odds are stacked against us anyway, you know. But I think if you just stay focused and have discipline, you know, you got to be looking for that greatness every day. I ain't trying to be good. I've never tried to be good. I don't want to be average. And that's not against another person. I'm just talking about me. So it's like, even when you think about the Kobe Bryant's of the world, he's like, nah, I'm not competing against Michael Jordan. I'm competing against myself. You see what I'm saying? And that's what it really comes down to. And I think if we can all find that within ourselves, then we'll be living in our superpowers. My man, my man. Hey, check out the new book. You can check it out on Amazon. What's the official release date for the hard copy? I mentioned you noticed the date this earlier. November 8th. Yes. There it is. There it is. And you at San Diego Comic Con. You got some time today on the last day to come by the booth and check it out. Get it signed. We out, Chef. <laughs> Forever work. My man Omar Epps. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, man. I appreciate you. No doubt. No doubt.